I, I can tell the fake story. I love that story. That's a great story. <laughs> Me too. Story. I'm really proud of it. This is my okay. single my greatest achievement at PSCS. It's um, all of our achievement. Thank you. <laughs> one, of the, one of the things we have identified is community-centered education for us means the voices of the people with whom we live our lives are more important than the perspectives of the who, who, whomever. So Sam, uh, there are three Sams in the building. I'm admin Sam, there's teacher Sam, there's student Sam. Very first days of school last year, teacher Sam and I were standing talking. A student, a new student came over and started on Sam. I don't know what, Sam is a black man. I don't know what magic, what black magic you did in there, but I was falling asleep and your voodoo and blah, 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 blah. And Sam was just looking at me and just like, this is a little weird. And uh, so the student walked away and I said to Sam, should we, should, she, do you want to talk to him about like how weird that was or should I talk? I'm like, I'll do it. I'll, I'll talk to him about it. He was a white kid. He's new. Like, let me just, his language was just coded in ways that he did not begin to understand. And it was landing on Sam badly. Mm. I love that story because that kid understood what I was saying because that kid Mm, because that kid embraced the lesson, because that kid feels proud to have learned to listen, mm. because that kid was able to walk over to teacher Sam and say, whoa, I just learned something and I'm sorry. And like, <laughs> I, I'm happy to be in this relationship with you because I see I have something to learn. And he said the same thing to me. And it, for mm. me, that is like the essence of what we're trying to do here. This is the Agentic Schools Podcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. I'm your host, Don Berg. Hello and welcome to Agentic Schools. Um, we are here with Puget Sound Community School staff members, Siglinda Livery Nichols, Valerie Diaz Leroy, and Sam Mitchell. Um, so, to kick us off, I'll actually have each of you share uh, a story. You know, give us a sense of a student who really sucked the marrow out of the experiences you offer. Like, who, a, a student or a family that really made great use of, of what you have to offer. Hmm, wow, that's a really good, great question. <laughs> um, well, I, I want to think about that for a moment, but um, my time here has probably had a few um, since I've been here about, tw this will be my 12th year. Mm -hmm. um, and I would just say um, the most recent family that has um, really, really sucked the marrow out of um, out of us. Um, is that a, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. It's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, it's like getting the maximum value out of out of what what you oh, do. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm thinking about it. Like I, I immediately have to start with a challenge. <laughs> 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 we'll get there, but <laughs> that's not one. Great. Um, okay. We have uh, what we call seminars for each mm. grade level. We don't often divide students up by grade level. We do for this um, because it leads to senior seminar, which is a really beautiful mm. process um, and a scaffolded experience to deeper self understanding, um, our place in the world, this community. Um, and just what we like to do, there's a, a student who, uh, through some cultural heritage work and identity work, um, had to come up with a project. And this project was changed throughout the term, but ended up being reading out loud because it was something that she loves to do. And she realized she wasn't really good at it. She, she got tired. Um, mm. And so focused on this and did a really lovely presentation about her experience. Uh, and then decided to keep reading out loud to community members and utilized um, 
the free blocks that we ask students to take, um, coordinated schedules with her friends um, and other students who wanted to join, and uh, probably could have turned it into some sort of independent study, though chose to just mm. just continue on um, improving something that she really enjoys and offering our community a beautiful gift. And um, this was my first year here, so I know you all have seen a lot more. Um, but for me, this was a really beautiful example of all the things we talk about, um, of mm -hmm. self-discovery, of engaging in community, mm -hmm. of figuring out what people want and how that relates to you, and then making the time scheduling the time or however we want to look at it um, to then engage in in growth in learning in community in friendship in a really uh, beautiful and self-directed way mm. nice um, I I have seen some true, truly remarkable things um, happen in my time here at PSCS and also um, in education in the last God, almost two decades. Um, mm. But what I saw this last year with a student who um, is a rock climber um, uh, and a boulder, just passion outside of sort of outside of school has always been. Um, movement, uh, skateboarding. Uh, she she sort of survives and and thrives in places that are not generally made for her or not generally accessible by her. Um, uh, she's a young black woman, and her she's a young queer black woman, and um, her. I don't think she knew what she wanted to do as a senior project, and she spent a lot of time. Um, figuring that out and, and really trying to understand that ultimately what we wanted was for her to, what, what we hoped for her was to engage in a process that felt really good and important to her and that all she had to do was document that for, for us and mm. share, it with us, share it with the community. Um, and her family is uh, uh, really supportive of her, but um, as she grew into seniorhood, they were um, really trying to let her you know, have agency and move forward on her own. And I, I see that and we were too. And her senior project that she pulled together was um, working with the Seattle Bouldering Project and other people in her uh, community to create a space at Seattle Bouldering Project that um, uh, would host events, uh, nights for black women uh, to mm. climb. Um, and she uh, put together these events. She created uh, spaces. She put. She did the social media, which wasn't really her forte, although she loves social media. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> um, but calling on people, bringing people together, and she hosted an, a few of these nights, and they were wildly successful. And then her process, because we ask students to um, share their very first draft of what they might do in the beginning of the year so that everybody follows their process and is engaged by the end of it. They are all weighted to see how it turns out. Um, by the end of it, she had had a, a couple of these nights. She was planning some more. She had um, you know, worked towards uh, an application with the North Face Athletic, um, Youth Athletic Program. And all this to say that I don't, when she came here, I, I think she was a little bit like, oh, I, I'm in, in this very small school and I, I'm, am I going to find myself here? I don't know. And ultimately, she, um, she worked with, with the people here that she could trust as much as, as possible, which is life experience that might lead her to not necessarily do that. And she, she came through with this incredible project that was so empowering for not just her, but ultimately empowered a lot of, helped empower, helped other people feel empowered mm -hmm. to, um, to see that they could do incredible things like that and that they could shift their mindset about what was possible. Mm -hmm. It was really amazing. I cried when she graduated mm -hmm. hard, pretty hard. Yeah, <laughs> nice. <clears throat> yeah. Um, okay, so I'm gonna jump in now. For me, you've both cool. highlighted um, parts important parts of how I think about it, what I think it looks like when students suck the marrow out of the experience. 
Um, and so I, I can think of two people off the top of my head immediately. Um, one of them is a student who graduated a couple of years ago who was a um, kind of typically boy acting person in the space. Snarky, sarcastic, um, flirted with flirted with kind of exclusive humor, exclusively political humor. Um, mm -hmm. And it became kind of a toxic problem for him mm -hmm. and for everybody else. And I think working pretty closely with an, an advisor who was really honest with him came to realize that that's who he had become at least in everyone else's perspective of him and worked right. very hard to shift that and ultimately talked in front of the whole school said something very simple like your words become what people know about you and i realized he realized that mm -hmm. people thought he was being genuine when he was actually <laughs> he oh, didn't yeah. appreciate that he was trying to land humor that was just being entirely missed. And he essentially committed to the whole community to shift that, to shift his own presentation, and, and then engaged with people who, students who weren't always surrounded by friends for lots of different reasons, social reasons, reasons of neurodivergence, uh, he also, the student also really fully engaged with this, with all of the staff members. I feel like he really uh, embraced the opportunity to develop sincere relationships with lots of people here of all ages. Uh, and he still actually comes back. He's in college now and he still comes back mm -hmm. once or twice a year just to be part of it and to remember nice. something and to show who who he who he is working to grow into mm. for me that shift and the sharing of the realization and the sharing of the sh of the attempt and the work to 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 speak the truth rather than speak the cool <laughs> marketable version of young adolescent man uh, that's that that's a he is a shining example for me of a of like masculinity that's positive and honest but also mm -hmm. just the PSCS student who noticed what was happening noticed the effect of his behavior in the community and then worked hard to shift it nice yeah, and that, that, that's actually, you know, when uh, you, you've both touched on things that are really central to, you've all touched on things that are central to kind of the, the what I'm trying to get at with this series is, is how does agency show up in ways that are not academic, I guess, <laughs> you know, like, like the mainstream, um, is that there's opportunities in schools like yours that are that, are that kind of, you know, it might be opening up to a community, the wider community, uh, providing opportunities. It might be that that looking inward and saying, oh my gosh, how am I showing up in the world? I think that's a really, uh, you know, that, that really illustrates kind of the different ways it can go. And it's not going to show up um, if you don't have that kind of community structure, that community process that, that enables that so so given that uh, <laughs> these great stories, and this is why I like to ground this in this in some stories is now give us that sort of the the sort of oh I'm a naive parent here or, or someone who doesn't understand you know, doesn't know anything about Puget Sound Community School now give me the the sort of okay how does it actually work there age range who you serve where you're located stuff like just the basic stuff Siglinda. <laughs> I'm our director of community engagement and admissions, um, and so uh, admissions is uh, is is all. I'm always connecting with people, <laughs> trying to explain what we do, um, mm -hmm. which um, is hard to. Uh, it's not hard to talk about, but it's hard to condense. <laughs> hard to condense, mm -hmm. um, and 
So PSCS uh, has been around, this is our 30th anniversary, um, and it was started wow. in 1994 by Andy Smallman, um, who uh, really um, had some pretty um, uh, big ideas that have are rooted our school in a lot of um, very, I guess what you would call, he would hate me to say, but non-traditional ideas. Right. Um, uh, for lack of a better term, progressive. All the words that describe us are often, <laughs> um, I, think of, I think of him going, Ugh, I think this should be the norm. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So uh, our school serves uh, students from sixth through 12th grade. So it's a wide range of students. We have about uh, any 30 to 40 in a given year. Um, we've been a little bigger, we've been smaller. Um, and our, our our pedagogy has has evolved, of course, over 30 years. Um, it was really rooted, we were once called the kindness school, um, Andy in positive psychology, um, uh, working through um, engaging students in, so they could learn self-advocacy, um, feel, uh, find out ways to become more empowered, um, uh, engage in their own educational journey. We do, uh, we, we did and still do scheduling every year of classes right. together um, so that students are actually part of the process of deciding on their path in the school. Um, what has uh, always been um, a teaching staff, there's also administration, but everybody's been a facilitator, um, every uh, teaching staff are often advisors also, so they um, work with students individually and then they have an advisory group, so there's this little small community um, within the community. And then there are a lot of multi-age classes. People can be together at whatever level they feel comfortable in. We do have some developmentally appropriate um, separation, if you will. Um, especially with young middle schoolers and um, seniors are in a totally different process, but they're all here in our school together and we engage mm -hmm. in the community as much as possible. We're, we do that more, I think, in, at higher levels at this point and also recognize that this global pandemic really, <laughs> really got in the way of engaging out in the community. Um, uh, and when in 2021, Oh, it's oh, we. Um, the, the, the Andy had retired in 2018. Um, we had an interim head of school, and um, when the, uh, when she was then became head of school, she then left, and the families came together and said, "We don't really want another um, interim. We would prefer uh, to ask the staff the, what they would like." <laughs> to have mm -hmm. leadership in the school. And the staff fairly unanimously said, we would like to um, have collaborative leadership. Andy had mm -hmm. set the stage for that. Even the interim had, had considered that. And we um, also, so we, we, we still offer um, a lot of the, the same sort of opportunities before, but we also model collaborative leadership as an entire staff. So the three of us are our administrative team, we have director in our name, um, but in reality, we're a fully collaborative staff. Nice. Um, and we elevate the teachers uh, and the students together and the staff together um, and experience over um, a lot of other things that other schools don't. And, mm -hmm. and this is a long-winded answer. I'm very sorry. But it, there's, it's been a lot of shifts. Um, and right, so right. We're still really rooted in um, a lot of the things um, that the school started uh, started with, and that um, and the evolution has also just come to be more centered and rooted in a very specific kind of equity, where we center critical race theory, uh, gender, and uh, intersectionality um, at high high levels, uh, prioritizing that om over rote academics at right. any given moment, and uh, centering the experiences uh, of our black, brown, and indigenous teachers um, and students. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of the academics are a little more, um, uh, we talk a lot more about the equity of academics and what is what is available to students. Um, but we still schedule all together and we group. Everything is based on community and individual needs and then the collective needs. Mm -hmm. So you're scheduling. Um, 
so, so, so I really want, really appreciate actually the long answer because because mm -hmm. part of what um, I'm seeing in the schools that I'm, you know, looking at is that there's a sense that 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 it is an evolutionary process as an organization, is that nothing stays the same, yeah. is that there is a way in which you know sure you may have your founders involved for decades, um, but at some point those. Even the, the founders are saying we got to shift and change, and we got to you know respond to what's real and what's in our community. Um, and so I think that's really an important part of the story of of, of many of the schools that I'm that I'm looking at. Um, and and so uh, p one thing: how many staff do you have? How many adults in the space? It varies, like mm, somewhere yeah. around ten at the moment. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. And we have volunteers who come in, so right. it really shift throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And 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 so um, the scheduling process, um, which I got a little bit of insight into when I when I interviewed for a job there some years ago. Um, we call it uh, schedule mapping. Schedule mapping, that's such a good good term for it. Um, now that if I recall, is is some combination of here's something I want to offer and here's something I I want to be offered, <laughs> you know. So yeah. it's give and take, um, and so so give me a little bit of a sense, or give our audience actually a little sense of of how that plays out. Like um, like h how do courses come about? Uh, how much is sort of traditionally academic, and how much is just fun stuff that you do? Um, well, we have three terms, and each term we create a course catalog, um, almost like oh, a okay. college course catalog. And uh, teachers are planning what the what will be offered that year, thinking about the previous year. Uh, and we ask students if they would like to also offer classes, to offer classes, and we have volunteers who come in as well. Um, so all of that goes into the pool and um, we put a, a blog up and students prioritize the classes they want to take in mm -hmm. the coming term. Um, they label it by color, black, gray, and, and white and you know you're given three black slots so really think about the, the, the courses, the classes you want to take that th this is it and you're going to tell the community mm -hmm. that this are, there's a priority here um, whether it's something I really want to take or um, in recent years, we have switched to um, credits. So we don't offer hmm. grades, um, but we do ask that when students graduate, they meet gra um, Washington State graduation requirements. Oh, fascinating. So there's still a lot of choice, right? <laughs> right. You're still building your schedule. You're deciding when you take what. Um, and, and, and it's important to note that um, with social studies or cultural studies or, or um, uh, language arts or science classes, where m students are meeting the requirements for the state, we're just approaching it in a different way. So nice. you mentioned something about um, every school should be like this and every school can be like this. <laughs> um, it's prioritizing the quality and the depth of the work versus how much you cover. Um, mm. which tends to allow for more critical thinking. Uh, anyway, I took a little tangent. Uh, and so now we've got all the classes, students prioritize them, they build a schedule, and then we get in a room, mm -hmm. and um, we then, actually students then, look at the schedule and see where there are conflicts. And there's guidance here. There's guidance from other students who are mm. really familiar with this. Everyone has a buddy. Uh, and then they name um, issues that may come up or conflicts mm. that may come up in the community. Um, I, you know, I have two black classes, two of my priority classes in one slot. Can we switch this? Mm. And before they do that, they've had to have it approved by the instructor. Um, they maybe have talked to some other students, like, does anyone else here have a conflict? Is this going to help any of you? Before bringing mm. it to the big group, and then we just see. Um, who, if we can make a switch, if that's possible, uh, who it helps, who it hurts, mm -hmm. uh, and that all weighs into whether whether we make switches and then ultimately that term, what the schedule looks like. So some students, everyone walks into it knowing 
I may not get everything that I want or need, right. really, for like mm-hmm. for graduation. Um, right. But because there is this this shared experience and understanding that um, I am going to benefit and everyone else in this room is going to benefit, and we're going to do whatever we can to make this the best term for each person um, in the school. It's really a lovely difficult and mm-hmm. beautiful process. And how long does that take? Days. <laughs> it takes days. Yeah, we schedule yeah. Uh, what are called foundations um, to, uh, in the beginning of the school year, there are actually no classes for the first two weeks of school. Um, two weeks, we, yeah. We work, uh, yeah, well, roughly. I mean, there's not a full two weeks sure, in sure. there. But it's, uh, <laughs> but it's Community building, um, identity, uh, identity work, um, community out. You know, we try to under, understand the community that we're in, the mm. Chinatown neighborhood on Duwamish land, um, on ceded Duwamish land, and right. root ourselves here. Um, and then we go start this process where students meet with advisors, even in the summer, to um, start thinking about what they want, need, and um, want to offer. Nice. And it, so we do that three times a year. Um, it's small, you know, by winter term, it's a sh- maybe more more just around scheduling and, sl- and less mm, in we're right. still, still community. And then we do that again for spring term. Nice, nice. And there's yeah, a so conflict resolution team, which I just yes. want to make sure people understand. Jump in. <laughs> Put together. Um, uh, they help older students help younger students, uh, or newer mm. students, I should say. Sure. Um, people who've been engaged in it longer help, they're, they're assigned, um, they sign up, they're uh, then assigned certain people, they, nobody has to do anything they don't want to do necessarily, although we are challenging people to rise to those <laughs> Um And then uh, they uh, are part of the process and they help, um, they, they, they sort of create a, a conflict resolution team so that by the time we come together in one big room to do this, the bigger schedule map, mapping process, um, they uh, have had some, some people who know a lot more about it uh, or who have done it more often working together to, to put those in motion. And they work with Sam often mm-hmm. um, and folks who, you know, keep records in a very specific way. And we kind of consider that that those uh, foundations and schedule mapping to be you you've already done the work of adults mm. uh, you've already done the work <laughs> of people who will be out in the world doing work contributing right making making negotiating for advocating for themselves negotiating with others who are mutually advocating for themselves um, mm. and 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 it sounds like you also have a sense of community around we're collectively coming to agreements and and understanding so that we can you know make this a great opportunity for everybody is that yeah. fair to say yeah. Yeah, it's 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 sometimes there's tears yeah i mean it's yeah real. yeah i mean and 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 the hard thing is that you probably have to strike some things that seem really cool yeah yeah it's yeah. just and, <laughs> and we have to deal with differentiation in a way that um is is um, f- finding what the ways that people can can advocate for themselves that do that differently or um, uh, or need something else in the process um, and that is um, part of our our collective efforts mm-hmm. for sure right on right on can so I, so, I want to jump in sure. I want to jump back I, to, where, to where I was taking the answer in my head to your question which is about ah. the, the way it works Val identified lots of the pressures on creating a schedule, what teachers want to teach, what students want to take, the Washington State graduation requirements, all those, you know, parents' hopes and dreams for their kids, all yes. of that, all of those, pre- all of those pressures are real and push in different ways, sometimes to different answers, but push in different ways on how is, what, what a schedule actually looks like. Mm-hmm. And fundamental to our school, increasingly, because of the work of teacher Sam Williams, Elizabeth Ortega, who just left, uh, Hannah, a lot, the teachers who have been here for a while, um, classes look different, curriculum looks different, critical race theory, as we understand it and ground our work, 
means that a Washington State history class at PSES starts with the black man who came across the Columbia in response to the explicitly white supremacist state constitution in, or, or in, of Oregon. Yep. It isn't the story of white people coming across the prairie. That may be part of the story, right. but for Sam and for our school, it's important to get to fuller truths that represent the lives of people who, who are here, who have been here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the same exactly. is true in a book class. I, I am proud to say that in the nine school years I've been here, The Great Gatsby hasn't been taught once. <laughs> we're creating a different camp. We're, we're exposing students to writers they may not know, in, and, and students in public school will not know probably, or may not know unless they're right. readers. The, those approaches to, to what, is, what can be traditional curriculum are central to PSCS. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, there, so, so one way of saying it is that, that the academics live large in your community. They just live large in a way that's, that's got some nuance about the community that you're in. And the truth of American history, as yeah, apparently sure. we want to ignore. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, some people do want to ignore. Yes, absolutely. Sure. And 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 there's a there's a very real nature in studying the history in the past and what's true, and is that everyone has to make choices about what they will put their eyes on, what they will, you know, explore. And so you as a community are saying we're grounded here and there's certain realities that we're going to look at. We're going to choose this is the history we put forward that we uh, acknowledge. And, and it's going to be different from a community uh, somewhere else. You know, it's going to be different from Oregon. It's going to be different from, you know, a, another country or another state. Um, and, and, and so I think that's another thing that, that, that I think is a commonality amongst many of the schools, uh, ag what I consider agentic schools, is that um, in one way or another they ground themselves in in the identities that they have chosen and that they, you know, the, even the ones they haven't chosen that are around them, you know, they may have been born into this community, but then they're going to see, have a lens of like, who am I here? And who do I choose? Like, you, you know, beautiful story of, you know, people choosing who am I? How am I here? And 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 part of what the school community is doing is is being that mirror of reflection and saying, "Oh, is that who you are?" <laughs> and and then they, you know, make choices about that. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes they dive in and get go deeper with it, or they say, nah, "That's not really who I meant to be." Um, and so I think that's that's a powerful thing. That's the agency that's not it. Academics enriches it, but it's not the academics aren't it. Right. You know, it's it's really getting at a sense of who you are in the world um, and having the community say, "There's who how we see you," you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and you can make choices about that. Um, but that only comes through um, certain kinds of of ways of organizing community. Um, and then this is where, you know, we, we actually talked about conflict resolution. I was like, oh, you're going to go to, the, but you meant scheduling conflicts. <laughs> but tell me about how you structure conflict in, in just every day, you know, something happens, you got teenagers there, they, you know, create a little drama. What happens when that hap when, when they do that? It depends on what it is. I mean, yeah, sure. we encourage conversation, mm. um, hopefully leading to dialogue where like we, just, we have to connect somehow um, and ho hopefully that comes to a place of, of deeper understanding of, of each self and each other and we get to a point where we're actually able to talk so that my friends, so that my peers, so that my uh, adults in this space, my community members hear me, they're listening to me, and I'm going to do the same. Um, that mm -hmm. takes time. Uh, there, <laughs> if, if, if something happens in a deeper um, 
resolution or transformation is necessary, we do have um, established restorative justice practices. Mm -hmm. We really believe in conflict transformation where if something happened, we don't want to just restore it to where we were. Mm. Some, there was something wrong there for a reason. So what are we going to do? What understandings do we have to shift that through that restorative justice process? You probably get a little more elaborate. Well, I would also just say it's evolving. It's one of those things that's mm. really difficult because, you know, we're working on our handbook right now. And last mm. year, we went through a couple of processes of restorative justice that actually I think went really well, although we've had some in the past that I still think went well, but didn't end up with maybe somebody staying here or mm. um, with everybody feeling totally resolved. And that's not always possible. But um, uh, the most important part about it is that we talk about it as a staff. Um, uh, students are first, in, regardless of whether you, how you feel about everybody in the building, that we have so many talented, multi-skilled, compassionate people in the building. There's generally somebody that you can come to. And if it's your advisor, that's great. If it's one of our leadership team, that's great. Um, and so if there's, if there's a way that we can understand and find out, of course, um, right. we will talk about it as a whole staff. We will um, notify parents if necessary. We, um, if it feels like that's part of it, sometimes those right. conflicts are like, we just need to talk to each person, find out a little bit more, um, gather information, and um, see what level this, this really rises to. And we have the, the modeling that we're able to do with collaborative leadership is, um, it's freaking slow, but <laughs> the ability that we have to talk about it, to sort of stop what we're doing in this small mm. space and actually confront it if necessary, either in small a small uh, group of staff and student or um, uh, a larger group. I mean, we're, we spend a lot of time talking about power differentials, but right. it actually is easier without, um, without a, a buck at the top, you know, where that everything stops. It actually is easier because we have, we are reflecting um, what can happen if you, if you put, if you leave power in um, something a little different. We're all adults, but we are also all holding each other um, mm -hmm. accountable. And the stupid, it just, it just feels different, I guess, mm -hmm. is what I, I'm not sure I have the words for it exactly, but um, so then we're able to work through individual conflicts from somebody said something crappy to me um, and I didn't like it and I don't think they should be able to, I don't want to talk to them anymore. How do I do that in a small space? Mm. Not very possible. Um, <laughs> to us, you know, maybe a series of something that we weren't aware of until we suddenly are. Um, we went through a practice last year that took quite some time. We, and it's, and it has, um, it is often in a classroom, especially left to the individual teacher for sure. But when things um, bubble or become bigger, we talk about it and mm -hmm. we have collectively 120 something years of experience in schools mm. and for us the experience is what we're really um going on and and really al allowing especially like i said as we update our handbook I, it's so impossible to, to only just have the one um experience and say this is how it's going to be every time and we're trying mm. to be much yeah. more upfront about that it's shifting every single time mm -hmm. we can guarantee we have people who care who know your right. kid very well and who understand it's hard as parents because you're focused on your kid um, we can only address them as they come up and we do have like you said processes for that but um, it's it's a it's a question often of how, who who, who thinks what and how can we bring those things together and mm -hmm. and and then also what will that mean for for the next time something like this happens right and, right. and how are we addressing it with the layers of anxiety mental health mm -hmm. uh, uh neurodivergence that people are owning differently than they used to be and in a time when social media mm -hmm. allows you to see examples of anything that right. your heart desires uh or that you might feel in that moment um and these kids, the kids are so, they have language that mm -hmm. I never had. Mm. <laughs> it's just, Interesting. Uh, yeah, they have access to 
to, to ways ideas. of understanding and ideas and how things should be resolved. Mm, um, right. That makes sense. And we have to center us back in this community mm -hmm. all the time. So, so in that restorative process, how, um, I mean, you, you, you are grounding yourselves in a shared leadership context. Um, how, is there an emphasis on the peer support for those things? Interesting. Um, do you think? I'm I mean, not sure I understand. I'm not question. sure I understand it either. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 um, so one. You started off by saying, first of all, you you start with making sure conversations happen. Is mm -hmm. that 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 it, when before going to another level to go into something formal, you're saying work it out first. Then once you hit that, like okay, we're we're going. Is there like like. Uh, does your restorative process start with a peer group, like bringing it to a peer group, or does there always an adult in from the start? Adult facilitation, I guess. It depends on the circumstance. Okay. You know, I mean, it's there's no, there's just no one process that fits every situation. Some of them, you know, I mean, as you started with teenagers in the building, and they, it's life is dramatic. It's the first time they're facing a lot of these feelings, situations, confrontations, challenges to what they perceive as their central to their identity at that moment. All of that's just, it's real, it's dramatic. Right. And yeah, and so sometimes it's, sometimes it's easy for us to say that it's not something we need to worry about. Like that's something you guys got to figure out. Or that can happen between an advisor and a student or an advisor and two students or right. that may need two adults and two students. That may need a, a, a group even larger than that. At some point, we may need to bring parents into it. Like it right. just, there's kind of that, that variability at every, in every situation. And even, you know, anybody who's worked in a school knows the experience, has had the experience of, Hearing something from a student, this thing happened, it didn't seem right. Okay, well, let me ask a couple of people questions about it. And suddenly you're unpeeling an onion that just right. never ends, never ends, never ends, never ends. Oh, now we have to talk to that person and that person and that person. Okay, well, those three <laughs> conversations led to six more conversations. That's real. Right. <laughs> right. And figuring out, I mean, so so there isn't a, there isn't a simple process. Right on. Nope, go ahead. Sorry, Sam. That's good. I'm One of the important things to note is that as adults, we try to either be the advocate, mm. if, you know, if we're an advisor, or a guide. Um, and we really want to allow and center student voice, student experience, student expression. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And that determines who else that really and then shifts like sam was saying yeah. as we're going through a process or depending on what it is but that can change and the adults and the role they play shift depending on the circumstance okay. uh, and it's really important to leave that open right because right. we are individuals yeah i would just add that we do have processes for group yeah. um conflict or um, discussion about things. We have something called a super meeting, which anybody can, ga can gather anybody at any time. Um, it's, there's a process to that um, that does still involve adults. I mean, we really, what really differentiates us, I think, ultimately from, say, a democratic school or Sudbury model is, is that we do think the lived experience of adults um, who, uh, who have been in this community for a while or who have been in other uh, communities do lend it themselves very explicitly to helping foster these processes mm -hmm. um, differently than just having kids, um, young people run, run the things. Right. But um, there are avenues for students to um, uh, broach larger topics, things that are troubling them. I and mean, we have community meeting once a week, mm -hmm. uh, which is sometimes a place to do that. Um, sometimes we do a fishbowl conversation where people watch a certain subsect of the, of the school engage in a conversation about 
a conflict or right. um, something we're trying to talk about or think about. Um, and then, like I said, super meetings. There's tons of different opportunities for that or in the advisory group. But when it, I do think when it comes to individual conflict resolution, at least as we are now, it's pretty mm-hmm. adult-led. Okay. No, that's fair. Mm-hmm. That, and that's exactly the, the challenge is, is what I'm getting a sense of is um, adult-led for you is still centered in a commitment to student voice, to for their sure. being, the, they're, they're centered. Um, yeah. And then that's that's a big differentiator from mainstream, is that adult led means adult controlled and adult voice, um, and and so and so I think it is important to highlight those distinctions between sort of democratic schools that tend to put it in the hands of the youth as well, um, and versus doing it just a different way, but saying okay, well we're going to center voice, but we have this other different process, and it comes out of a history of of how you came to evolve over the last 30 years. <laughs> um, and, yeah. and so I think it's, it's, uh, it's important to observe uh, as I'm looking at agentic schools as, 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 as I want to tease out, like what is, how is it happening, but then, you know, making sure that, that, that there's a sense of, they're all distinct from the mainstream, <laughs> like we can, we can agree on that, uh, but there's many ways to achieve the agency that we're talking about, um, and I and I think it's it's you know one of the challenging rhetorical devices used in in some of the democratic schools is as if adults aren't a valid contributor there. It implies that it's not true, and it's not how they actually operate. Uh, you know, I, I've been to them enough to know that no, the, <laughs> the caring adults in the space are doing stuff. Uh, yeah. It may not look like regular stuff, but it it, it what I see in all of them is caring community. Sure. Um, it it shows up differently. It shows up out of their history and out of the community they're in and how they, you know, it's unique to each. Um, but it still is fundamentally a- adults in a caring community with a lot of kids. The kids usually outnumber the adults. Uh, <laughs> uh, and so there's a certain power that they have. And what I, th- what I feel about all of the agentic schools is that they're all willing to say, you outnumber us, you do actually have this power, and how can we use that power wisely? And we as adults, we have a certain power, we have society gives us a certain power, and we're going to express love through that power and using it appropriately, not arbitrarily, not you know to further my agenda, but we are a school and a school means it's about learning. And our learning has to be us learning together, not I'm going to teach you. That's uh, something that happens, uh, but that happens to everybody. You know, like, uh, and we're gonna be the adult in the room at times, uh, but mm-hmm. it's really about how do, we, how do we bring it down to like, how are we gonna express ourselves as a community together and learn in the process? Um, so yeah, so that's, that's what I'm looking for is, 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 is really like, how are you holding that space in, in a way that really, uh, uh, allows their agency to become the lesson, the lesson, I mean, you, you expressed it beautifully. That's why I start with that question is, is you have kids who either looking inward or outward said, is this who I am? And, and a community said, you know, reflected it back and they took action to do amazing things um and 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 so that's actually i mean there's nothing more beautiful than that in in an educated in in a truly educative sense it's like that is what they're learning is how to be an agent in the world um so so yay (laughs) could i just clarify that sure we do kind of have not kind of we have one agenda which is um at all costs um to uh, mitigate harm and violence against black and brown and indigenous bodies um, and to educate through an abolitionist framework um, and um, tr- uh, to in- ensure as much as possible that the voices that are generally um, undervalued are heard. Um, and while we talk about this a lot because our population has grown, especially in queer, trans, um, mm. non-binary students, um, and our we have a um, 
fairly diverse staff of um, folks who are um, represent many of those identities. Um, our our agenda does exist. Um, right, in, right. I I think I'm not speaking out of mm -hmm. turn and saying that um, we're we're unabashed. <laughs> but that's that the point. Well. That's the yeah. point. Is it is yeah. an upfront. This is who you're plugging into. There, you're you're not hiding it. You're not even being subtle about it. You're saying, this is how we are. This is the community we're being. Um, and 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 you accept you, you you come into this community knowing that. Um, and if you freak out about it, then <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> that's what you bought. <laughs> um, yeah. Cool, cool. Um, so so. I want to, well, actually, I need to wrap it up here. <laughs> We're getting on it. So, so in, in, in wrapping it up, um, let's go, let's go back to, um, to, in a sense, the original question taking me is, is tell me about a, a, a challenge, you know, give me a, we're going to end on stories of, of challenges that, that mm -hmm. were building your community, uh, that, that, that were challenging, you know, you, but then community was better at in the end. Tell me, tell me about how that worked. I, I can tell the fig story. <laughs> I love that story. That's a great story. Me too. Story. I'm really proud of it. This is my okay. single my greatest achievement at PSCS. It's um, all of our achievement. Thank you. <laughs> one, of the, one of the things we have identified is community-centered education for us means the voices of the people with whom we live our lives <clears throat> are more important than the perspectives of the who, who, whomever. So, so Sam, uh, there are th three Sams in the building. I'm admin Sam, there's teacher Sam, there's student Sam. L very first days of school last year, <clears throat> teacher Sam and I were standing talking. A student, a new student came over and started on Sam I don't know what, Sam is a black man. I don't know what magic, what black magic you did in there, but I was falling asleep and your voodoo and blah, 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 blah. And Sam was just looking at me and just like, this is a little weird. And uh, so the student walked away and I said to Sam, should we, should, she, do you want to talk to him about like how weird that was or should I talk? I'm like, I'll do it. I'll, I'll talk to him about it. He's a white kid. He's new. Like, let me just, his language was just coded in ways that he did not begin to understand, and it was landing on Sam badly. Mm. <laughs> okay, so I took this kid outside. Well, first I, first I pulled him aside. I'm like, here's what just happened. You just used a bunch of racist coded language with a black teacher, and, it, I, I, and he felt terrible about it, right? He felt, this kid felt terrible. And lit, all day, I just watched him just like, oh. Okay, so finally I pull him outside at the end of the day and I just happened to have a fig in my hand. I was just having a snack. And I said to him, do you know what, have you ever had a fig? No, I've never had a fig. Do you know what's inside this if I bite into this fig? He's like, I have no idea. So I took a bite, I'm like, here it is. It's gooey, it's pink, it's sweet, it has seeds in it. I'm like, do you feel embarrassed or ashamed that you didn't know it was in the fig? No. I'm like, well, that's what I'm asking you to think about this morning. I'm not asking you to be ashamed for something you didn't know. I'm asking you to, to listen to what you're learning or listen to what you're being asked to learn and take the information in and use it the next time you talk to Sam just to, be, to talk to him in a way that he can hear, to talk to him in a way that he can <laughs> respond to you as a full human because you accept him as a full human. And you understand the words you're using have have history and context, especially with him. Mm. I love that story because that kid understood what I was saying, because that kid, because that kid embraced the lesson, because that kid feels proud to have learned to listen, mm. because that kid was able to walk over to teacher Sam and say, whoa, I just learned something. and. I'm sorry, and like, <laughs> I, I'm happy to be in this relationship with you because I see I have something to learn. And he said the same thing to me. And it, for mm -hmm. me, that is like the essence of what we're trying to do here. Mm -hmm. I see something happening. I can take care of Sam. 
I can also teach something and take care of the student. And in the meantime, I can make our community tighter, more careful, more aware of each other, more able to take care of each other, all of the things. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Do you guys want to jump in or shall we call it? I, I was just going to say that that's, that's a really great example because it, it highlights all of the things we've talked about, like responding to who is in the building, who is part of our community presently. Also, some facts about the world that have been left out of our collective memory. All of that has to be here. Um, and it and it and it really helps when these sorts of situations and challenges come up because we pull we we pull from this this sense of knowing um, the data the the emotional responses and 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 naming hmm. not in a like we. I, not to guilt and not to to burden but to uplift because we know that knowledge through growth is powerful and that's what can allow us closer like not ease but allow us to put one foot in front of the other when we're walking down this path toward Toward growth and understanding of self. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that a story in particular particularly highlights something important about us because I think a lot of people might hear that immediately and be like, "Why was Sam outside talking to that guy, to the kid, to the young person, and and telling him this?" And um, you know, there's all these sort of mm -hmm. things about, especially with parents and kid, young people who maybe don't know, and they're very worried about shame and whatever they think that means um, to us to a young person growing up um, and and what I love is that it was a conversation between two Sam's um, one who said I would prefer if you would if you would talk about this a relationship that we knew had prior um, uh, had been created prior where there was some trust right. um, a community of adults who all know each other pretty well and 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 a and a and an idea that somebody should should say something instead of not saying something or waiting mm -hmm. for further process, um, because sometimes that's the right thing and sometimes it happens quickly. And Sam in particular is is very good at being direct with students and it gets it can be misconstrued. And the reality is, um, all of them are are ultimately meant to to broaden a student's understanding of how somebody else feels and to then be, and also be spoken to by somebody who is 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 similarly identified is 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 uh, has a lot of understanding as a parent um, has an outside life and lived experience that we can understand and um, the rules of uh, the sort of supremacist rules that come along with how you're supposed to engage with students. We, we just talk about a lot and mm. we think about differently. And so I, that story is important to me. I'm sure, I know it's important to you, Sam. And, and, it, and it was, it was a, a moment, but we, and we think about it a lot. And we have lots of those experiences. We try to find the right person, um, if it's one person or if it's two, to, 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 to go into those hard moments. Um, and actually what we come up against most of the time are parents who, mm -hmm. Um, have a vision of um, uh, of what all of this experience now will will potentially like there's some certainty for the future um, and that is everything that we deal with in this school is very similar to that I, I mm -hmm. don't know that I could say one I think in the in the past um, we've had lots of ways in which um, toxic masculinity has shown up in this space mm -hmm. in which um, families who are value, valuing the cost of something like mm. this versus mm. that expected outcome. It's the same in most independent schools and all of us truly, uh, truly value public education as it's supposed to be, what it is supposed to represent, how it could be. Um, mm -hmm. And I just think that is a really important component to what we're able to, to do here. There's just, mm. I mean, and that is a, we have the time, we have the space in some ways. Um, 
not that I mean, we all we're totally don't have the time, but we have the time. We make <laughs> that time. And there's no looking back for me on that moment right. in any right. way. And I think with all of our moments, that's mostly the case. I can think of a few. We'll bring an advisor in to advocate for somebody um, to mm. feel like they have that, you know, we try to engage in those processes pretty specifically and, you know, under the auspices of what's sort of right and feels right and keeps the student feeling as safe as possible. And we challenge them and we know they can do hard things and hear hard things, right. Um, right. even if they have trauma responses or other things going on. Right. Cool. Yeah, I think that's, that's uh, so, so yeah, you, you, you know, one of the opportunities you have as an independent school is, as you said, you know, time and space. But I think it's, it's not just the time and space, it's, it's you have the opportunity to express some priorities within that use of time and use of space. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, I think, the thing that, that you, the, the, the word independent is pretty good because it's, you know, what, you're, what, you've, what you, as an organization, you're not beholden to um, the same pressures as a different kind of school one that's organized less independently. Um, and, so, and so what you're doing is expressing and, and bringing forward something that says, yeah, this is, this is our priorities and who we are and, and the challenges that we offer are along those lines. It's like, yeah, we have the opportunity to do this and we take advantage of that. <laughs> um, we do that. We, we're confronting the, the oppressions and the, the power structures that, that would otherwise just go unquestioned. Um, and so you're bringing that into a, into a space of, um, yep, yeah, this is how we are, who we are. Um, and, and being upfront and forward about that, I think is really powerful. Um, and I, I think it is, you know, modeling the agency as much as empowering and, and enabling it, I, I think is really, uh, you know, well done. <laughs> Thanks. We're, we're really trying to do that as a staff. I mean, mm -hmm. our, uh, yeah. Our main facilitators who teach most of the daily classes, SCOBY, uh, uh, Teacher Sam, uh, Elizabeth, who just left, we have a new um, hire, uh, Sharice, our um, Hannah, but the people here Brandon. teaching the classes, Brandon, um, Michael was here la uh, last year especially, they are the ones that are in classrooms doing a lot of this. We get to mm. talk about it a lot. Um, <laughs> nice. Um, I just want to be real, <laughs> real clear. We, I, we don't. Um, we, we the the ways in which we get to see it and engage in it as well. We're all part of it, but because we get to model it, and I I am shifting our narrative away a little bit from independent school and into intentional school, um, but, just yeah, because yeah. I, I appreciate. And that's teach, Teacher Sam's really, you know, global studies, intentional education. I mean, it's, mm. it, it, we're, we're, using, we're trying to shift words and verbiage mm -hmm. just for ourselves, mm -hmm. not that in, anything is wrong with independent, but mostly right. because under a framework that we just don't want to abide by the same Exactly, language. exactly. All right, well, let's call it, a, call it a day here. Thank you so much um, for, for your sharing and, and, and really, um, you know, illuminating uh, who you are and how you operate in the world uh, as Puget Sound Community School. Um, are there, w what should they be, what, what kind of, uh, what, do you have a website? What, what's, how should people follow up with you if they want to find out more? Uh, yeah, we are uh, Puget Sound, uh, PSCS.org, um, and you can find out more uh, on the website, although we're in the middle of, you know, every year we evolve all of these things as much as possible. So website's shifting a little bit of our language, um, but you can find out for sure more about us. Um, we're in Ravenna, which is one of those, you know, all schools find them kind of places. Mm. Um, and we have um, an Instagram. Uh, PSCS Seattle. PSCS mm. Seattle, uh, which has got a, is students uh, actually in, during the school year mostly post a lot on it and capture a lot of things for us. Um, student mm. leadership is a big, big deal here at the school. Um, and we have a Facebook and, but PSCS.org, we can call us. Cool. All right. Thank you very much and enjoy. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Don. <laughs> thank well. you. Bye. <laughs>